Tenant's Log, Entry 15, The Chase How much longer now? Too long. Stop asking. Ugh, I wish I could just teleport to the eggs, kick some space pirates in the teeth, and go home. Guest Saffron, I understand that you were feeling impatient and homesick. Wouldn't anyone be? I have finished my duties for this shift, so perhaps we can pass the time with conversation. Yes, girl talk. So, the captain- Stop saying that! Detective Erswin's not a girl! What? Then what are you? I am Erswin, am I not? Yeah, and Erswin is a girl, right? I mean, you're definitely not a boy, I can tell. No, guest Saffron, neither is right. You can't just opt out, Erswin. What kind of crazy world do you come from? Please, guest Saffron, every world has their own prejudices and biases regarding gender, do they not? I, and the majority of my species, simply wish to be excluded from all of that. We wish to be judged as ourselves, and nothing else. But you're super girly. Your eyeliner game is unrivaled, and you have double the number of eyes I do. No, guest Saffron. I take pride in my appearance because that's just who I am. Not because it's girly. I don't like all things girly, nor do I dislike them. That word, and others like it, they're not big enough to contain me. Will you be so kind as to respect that? Okay, Urs, if it'll make you happy. But from my experience, being a girl is awesome. I respect that. And I, Erswin, respect whatever you have going on. I'm super progressive, you know. I'm treating a male godparent. Didn't I tell you about my friend Manfred? These friends of yours. You sure they didn't maroon you here on purpose? Yes, Saffron, I finally found you! If you're not doing anything, could you look at my entire fantasy audio drama collection and rank them by accuracy? I have a better idea. How would you like to see real live magic for yourself? <gasps> would I? Guest Saffron! Cadet Caffrey is alright, isn't he? I just end up to hang out with Stan. I figure they balance each other. Now where was I? Oh yeah, I love that everyone is super open-minded in space. You know, I too have dealt with the small-mindedness of others. You probably don't have this level of bigotry here, Earth, but where I'm from, some idiots think that redheads can't wear pink. How... awful? But I showed them. I shattered that stereotype like I shattered godparenting records. Check out these selfies of me rocking pink. You have so many pictures of yourself. Ah, I sent you to the other side of the ship. How did you get here so fast? Are they for record-keeping purposes? Are you the dominant species on your world, or are there others? Actually, if you could provide me with a list of flora, fauna, history, geography, language, culture... Whoop. I just got an urgent call from Catechus. He wants me at the helm. The super restricted, out of bound for cadet's helm. But, but, uh, I didn't hear anything. It was a private call. Bye! Oh, wait. Knock, knock. Unless it's a matter relevant to the case. Go away! Hey, Caddy, how's it go? Is that Starcrossers? Yes. Since you seem to be using this drama series as your knowledge base for navigating our dimension, I thought I should get you for accuracy. And? It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in all my lives. Is that Duke Edgar? He doesn't show up until season three. Caddy, you watched two whole seasons in one night? I can't stop! O-M-G. You're going to love season three. It's where- No spoilers! It's not really a spoiler, but the whole premise starts shifting because King Hugo- Get out now! Hey, is this Starbeard's file? Hmm? Yes, I've been rereading it. Something doesn't add up. Yeah? Starbeard has been making grabs at other territories recently. We've agreed that Starbeard most likely wants the dragon eggs because of their potential power. Starbeard has not only killed off all his pursuers, but also anyone that remotely looked like a rival. So why would he give away power to another? Maybe he didn't mean to. Maybe he was robbed. No honor among thieves and stuff. I've thought of that, but no. I've been replying the recordings of the tracking spell and it looks like Starbeard veered slightly to the point where the egg is now, then resumed his normal course. Yeah, I see what you mean. It looks like he was dropping it off. A transaction, perhaps? Could Starbeard have been low on liquid funds? We did freeze a lot of his assets lately. Or did he owe someone a large debt and gave the egg up as collateral? But who's in a position to demand repayment of Starbeard? Could it be a trap? Does he have any way of knowing we're now able to track him? How about we kick butts and ask questions later? Something's off. Something's wrong. Something's very, very wrong. Remember what I said about chilling and how you need to do more of it? 
Another death is close at hand, I can feel it. I've barely experienced life in this new form, but it's about to be snuffed out again. I don't know how many more young deaths I can take! Well, Caddy, you need to get a hold of all yourselves. We have a job to do. This is just like in Season 1 of Starcrossers, when the enemies of House Borealis kidnapped Princess Aurora and demanded their hostage prince in return. Yes, I've been meaning to discuss that episode with you. You do realize the planets are rarely governed by- And when Sir Horizon knew for a fact that it was a trap, did that stop him from breaking out the hostage prince and rescuing his beloved princess? Yes, but there was no way the show was going to kill off a main character. Oh yeah? That didn't stop them from having Duke Edgar assassinate King Hugo with a black hole cannon in Season 3. I said no spoilers! Oh come on, everybody saw that one coming. Alert. We have arrived at the location of the first egg. Please convene at the dock. We'll fangirl later, Caddy. We have pirates to beat up. Whoa, Caddy, is that your spaceship? That's one snazzy spaceship. I know I haven't been around spaceships long, but I can tell that that is the snazziest of spaceships. Guess Saffron, please exit the spaceship. Aren't we going after the egg? I'm the only one with the qualifications to go on a mission of this caliber. The rest of you will stay here in case backup is needed. I'm plenty qualified. I took down an entire cart army just before I came here. With help. Maybe on your world you know how to deal with your kind of villains, but these... Baddies are baddies. Get in, I'm driving. No you are not! Get in the passenger seat now! Woo! See you later guys! We'll be back soon with a dragon egg! Good luck, Agent! Stay safe! Kick pirate booty! Stay close behind me, Saffron. This is a notorious smuggling port filled with unsavory types that- DON'T TOUCH THAT! Shush. We're supposed to be keeping a low profile. The tracking spell points to this seedy-looking space tavern. Over here. Quietly. This scanner can show us the inside of the establishment. Take a look and point out who has the egg. No one here. More left behind that wall. I think there's a hidden room back there. We're going to have to go inside then. Uh-oh, Cat. some of these lowlives are giving us the stink eye. Any chance they recognize you? I know some of these faces from my previous lives, but none of them should be familiar with my new appearance. Most likely, they're staring at you. Drat! My stunning good looks betray me. You're a new species they've never seen before. Perhaps if you stop floating? And let my shoes touch this grimy floor? I don't think so. Wow, you are a big guy. How did you fit in here? The doorway only comes up to your belly button. You don't belong here. We're lo- He's on to us! Evasive action! No! Hey! No fair using laser guns if you have eight arms! Oh no you don't! Blow you I blew a hole in me wall! Caddy, the dragon egg should be in here. This barricade should hold for a while. Now if you could tell me, what in the world were you thinking? This way! What are you doing? Uh, blasting our way to the secret room? We don't have time to tap bricks or throw books off the shelf. Now let's go! The egg! No, stop. This is too easy. Why would anyone leave anything so dangerous and valuable in an unguarded room? <sighs> because it was really well hidden and nobody knows we have magic tracking on our side. Still too easy. I don't trust this. I don't trust any of this. Caddy! Don't misunderstand me, yes, Saffron. I know we must do this just as Sir Horizon knew he must break into the dungeon knowing full well there was an ambush waiting for him. There's a child in that egg, and an anxious mother longing for it. I just need a few seconds to think. Think faster! They will most likely be an alarm. We've attracted enough attention to signal the buyer away, but the barricade is solid enough to slow them down. Okay. We will step forward together and I will break the case. You will not teleport or do any magic unless you get my signal. If things get too messy, I need you to take the egg and teleport out of here. And just leave you down here? Tell all the spouses of my previous lives that I've loved them very much.
Except Oris, who I married seven months and two lifetimes ago. He knows what he did! Ooh, what did Oris do? I'll tell you, if you follow my orders. Deal, let's do this! Steady. What's that noise? That hissing sound, guess Saffron, is the sound of the SDL Nankai. Perfectly camouflaged to the interior of this room. All ends synchronized to the target. Faster than the reflexes of any given species. SD what now? Super fast, invisible spice lasers. Black market and highly legal. 35 of them, pointed right at us. By super fast, do you mean faster than I can magic out of here? I'm afraid so. Put the egg down. I spent a ransom of a hundred planets to buy it, and I don't want to risk having it fried when my lasers annihilate you. So it was money Starbeard was after. Still, you can't expect Starbeard to let you keep it. You think he would sell something as powerful as this to a rival? He had no choice. Since our command froze all his assets and his crew was getting, uh, apprehensive. So he has dissenters among his men. Perhaps the centers who pointed him to you? That's right. You're going to die anyway, so I shall just discuss all my personal business with you. It's not like your memory of me spilling my guts will be inherited by another ancient, will it? Catechus Addison! Did you really think that would work? It works more often than you think! Listen, I've known Starbit longer than you've been alive. I know that maybe he's willing to leave you with a powerful weapon while it's inert and powerless, but he certainly won't let you live to see it hatch. Think, man! Why would he want anyone in a position to challenge him? Central Command can offer you protection IF you come quietly. This is your last warning. I didn't get as far as I did without learning how to call a bluff. If you value the life of the egg, you will put it down in ten. Saffron, listen. Nine. Everyone in the tavern. Eight. If you can do it discreetly. Seven. Magic them here. Six. Now, Saffron. Five. The scary guys with the guns? Four. Are you sure? Three. Trust me. Two. Do it now. <laughs> well, well, well. So this is where you've been stashing the egg. We've been searching this entire planet looking for ya, little hidey hole. Now, would you like to be split gullet to gizzard? <coughs> or do you prefer tongue to tentacles? Lasers switch targets! Now? Now, and all of us. All of us? Fine, but I'm leaving their guns behind. <laughs> ah! What is all this? You are all under arrest. Crew, get these pirates into jail cells. Ooh, I hope you aliens have sugary desserts, because I'm going to need a truckload of them. Special Agent Addison, guest Saffron, excellent work. Lecky, see what you can do about the sugary desserts. Captain, incoming transmission from Starbeard. Put his crew in the camera frame. I want him to see this. Lecky, accept transmission. Like he was played by Megan Cassidy. Saffron was played by Sarah J. Nelson. Detective Connus was played by Molly Rose. Detective Urswen was played by Cole Burkhart. Cadet Caffrey and the Tavern Keeper were played by Mangal Pretham. Agent Catechus was played by Puptown Funk. Captain Adam Bradomov was played by J.R. Nelson. The Smuggler was played by Matty Malley. And the Pirates were played by Puptown Funk, Chris Vanderford, and J.R. Nelson. Saffron and Perry was written by Junan Lidien and directed by Sarah J. Nelson and Junan Lidien. It was edited by Sarah J. Nelson. The music was by Kevin McLeod. For comments or questions, please email us at saffronandperry at gmail.com. And you can check out our Tumblr, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Saffron and Perry. If you'd like to support what we do, please consider becoming our patron on patreon.com slash saffronandperry, or by rating and reviewing us on iTunes. Thank you so much for listening. Here's your extra post credit scene. Hang on a sec, I gotta check in with Perry. Lucky? Contacting Perry. Connection established. Magic support. Hi, Pear. This is not Perry speaking. 
This is a recording of my voice. The actual me is too busy trying to save the very soul of this academy to come to the phone right now. If you need magic support, please contact one of my goblin assistants. If this is an emergency, and I mean you're surrounded by lava with pterodactyl circling overhead and you just remembered you left the oven on, then please contact the distress department and they will contact me. If this is the distress department, please make sure it's an actual emergency before contacting me and verify that it is indeed pterodactyls and not pterosaurs. Those are vegetarians. If this is Saffron Tristan or my mom, please leave a message after the anguished cry of distress. Ooh.